Okay, welcome to our first example on hydrostatic pressure. Now in the last few videos we've been talking about hydrostatic pressure, but I think this example should hopefully really solidify that material so we understand the different pieces and components of being able to calculate pressure at any depth d inside of a container. So in this example, we have this container here, and it is three meters tall, and it has a diameter of 0.5 meters. So it's a cylindrical container, and it is open at the top. And inside of this container, we have some sort of liquid. We don't know what kind of liquid it is, but we know that the liquid is filled all the way to the top. So this is a fully filled container of some liquid. And the problem statement here is really asking, what is the mass of the liquid inside of this container? Now there's a couple assumptions that we're gonna make um, or givens in the problem statement. The first is that the fluid is at rest. So this is a liquid that we're studying, not a gas, uh, but this fluid in, in particular is at rest. It's in static equilibrium inside of the container. Secondly, the fluid is incompressible. Now what does incompressible mean? Well, it simply means this rho value, which is mass density, is constant throughout the entire container. So at any depth d inside of this liquid or inside of this container, the rho is going to be constant. Additionally, the pressure at the very bottom of this container, so at the very bottom here, is 1.2 atm. Now, if you remember from the last video, we talked about what a pressure would be at the top of this open surface if we were at uh, sea level. And we found out that 1 atm is really equal to 101.3 kilopascals. If we're just studying pressure at sea level, the atmospheric pressure on the outside surface or the pressure being applied to this surface right here, because the container is open, that is 101.3 kilopascals. So how can we use this information here this pressure at the bottom and all of these other values to determine what the mass of the liquid is. Well, the first thing I'm gonna point out is that this row that we're talking about, that is mass density. So if you remember, mass density is really how much mass is there contained per unit of volume. So we technically have the volume of this container, right? It's a cylinder, we have the diameter and we have the depth, so we can easily calculate this volume uh, parameter here. But the question is asking, what is the mass? So what I can do here is I can actually take this equation and I can multiply it by V on both sides. And that's gonna give me this new equation, which is M is equal to rho V. And it's really not a new equation, it's just the same equation written in a slightly different form. So there's our equation for mass. What is the volume? So the volume of a cylindrical container is pi r squared, right? It's a circular shape at the top times the depth of the container. Well, this is equal to pi and the radius. Well, we know that the diameter is 0.5 meters. So that tells us that the radius is gonna be half of that. So 0.25 meters squared and the depth here that is three meters. And if we do the algebra here, this value is roughly equal to 0 0.589 meters cubed. So awesome, we have this volume, but what about the actual mass density? So this, this rho value here, right? We only calculated this V, which is this 0.589 meters cubed, but how can we use that to figure out what the mass is? Well, in order to do that, we actually have to use our hydrostatic pressure equation, right? So our hydrostatic pressure equation is really P, which is pressure at any depth D inside of a container that is filled up with incompressible liquid at rest is really equal to P naught, which is the pressure being applied at the surface of this body of liquid that we're studying, plus rho G D where rho is the mass density, g is our gravitational constant, and d is the depth. Now, there's a few things that we already know about this equation. We know that we can calculate this pressure p given p naught 
rho g in d. So if I were to say that I wanted to calculate this pressure at the very bottom of this container, well, p naught here would really just be the pressure at the surface that's at the very top of this container plus rho, which is our mass density, times g, which is gravity, times d. Now, what is d? Well, if we were looking at this pressure at the bottom, d would really just be the depth from this open surface all the way down to the point that we're studying. And in, in this case, that is at the very bottom. So what is P? Well, P is this P bottom, which is 1.2 atmospheric pressure, and that is equal to P naught. Well, P naught is this value right here, this 101.3 kilopascal. So I'm just gonna write 1 atm plus rho is what we're trying to figure out times g, which is 9.81 meter per second squared, times d, and d is three meters, right? Because d is the value from the very top here all the way to the bottom, and that's what we're studying. So let's go a little bit further. So this 1.2 atm is really just one atmospheric pressure times 1.2, right? So one atmospheric pressure is 101, 300 pascals times 1.2, right? And this is equal to 1 atm. Well, 1 atm is 101, 300 pascals plus rho times g, 9.81 meters per second squared, times the depth, which is 3 meters. Now, if we just do the math here, this is very simple algebra, right? Rho is going to be 688.4, and the units are kilograms, right? Mass per cubic meter. In this case, that's the volume. So awesome, we have our rho and we have our volume here. Now we can use this equation to simply figure out what the mass is going to be. So what is that? So our mass is really rho times V, and rho was 688.4 kilograms per meter cubed times volume, which was 0 0.589 meters cubed. And this, if we just do the math there, is about 405.5 kilograms once the units cancel out. So there we go. We figured out what the mass was of this unknown liquid in this container, and we used the hydrostatic pressure equation as well as our definition of mass density to figure it out.